Hey beautiful people, it's your girl Rocky, your revolutionary hippie from Life is Rocky. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Alright y'all, I just, I gotta reflect and sometimes uh, video reflecting is helpful because I can just stream my consciousness and I'm not like writing down which is another level of consciousness. So I've been having an off day today. Um, I don't really know why. I think I've been very productive in my last few days and I just needed a break of rest. But then I think I had a couple of sessions and sometimes like I've, I've been battling with the transition to happiness coaching and like financial stability within that tra transition. And it's like, I'm scared, I worry. Um, yeah, so I told my life partner and he was like, well, have you been outside today? And I was like, no. So we went outside, we vaped with this new vape pen that's amazing. <laughs> but I still, I was still like worried. And I was like, okay, I know what to do in this situation. It's to focus on what I want. And I was trying and it just was not, it wasn't working. Like I wasn't shifting my focus. So I was like, all right, I gotta go inside because the only thing that's going to soothe this worry about this transition is me doing the work to prepare myself and feel more secure in this transition. Um, and interestingly enough, the work that I had to do in order to become more prepared, um, I'm currently developing the Strengthening Self-Love program within my happiness coaching. And uh, so I was doing research on self-talk. And obviously I've, as I'm doing research on self-talk and shit, I'm hearing the shit that it's saying and I'm taking notes on the shit that it's saying so that I can teach, you know? And I'm just like, well, <laughs> could have used these earlier. <laughs> but I am proud of myself. And I think this is one of the things um, I learned when I was researching self-love. It's like, do it. Like actions as far as pouring love into yourself is for pouring confidence into yourself like these are actions you actively have to do like that's the only real thing that's gonna make you feel better about yourself is if something is changing you know and it's and it's not necessarily uh like I actually had to research so I had to go on my computer I had to look shit up I had to type shit out you know um but even changing your thoughts, because again, I'm researching self-talk <laughs> and I'm like, so one of the suggestions they said was to use your name. Um, and I was like, because we normally don't talk down to our friends, family, and loved ones. Hopefully, if so. But um, normally we don't and we would never say the things we say to ourselves to somebody else. So they were like, use your name. And that allows a psychological distance to then think about yourself in the third person, have more self-control over talking to yourself. Cause now again, you don't talk to anybody else that way. So why would you be talking to yourself that way? And, uh, whew, yeah, it, it, I immediately was like, Raquel, what you doing? <laughs> Look at what you're doing right now. <laughs> You are already, and I was literally talking to myself as I'm researching self-talk, and I was like, you are literally in the midst of hearing somebody else's thoughts, putting your own spin on it, because again, I am a licensed marriage and family therapist, you know, um, putting my own spin on it, creating exercises in the moment that I want to do with my clients and happiness coaching and think how I'm going to present the information and the, and the connection of what I already know to what I'm learning. And I'm just like, Raquel, believe in yourself. You got this. Look at what you're doing. Look at what you're doing. I'm just saying, you know, like, come on. Why aren't you believing this? And uh, as I rewatch this video, this is a message to yourself. <laughs> I feel better um and that's why I just had to stream my consciousness because I was like I'm thinking all this and I need to say it because listening one of the uh the videos I was watching they said like rewiring your brain 
to have more positive self-talk or at least neutral. Like you have to, it's like learning a new language and learning a new language. A lot of times is through listening, you know, um, even though I understand how I learn languages and I do better with visual and written before I do well with auditory, cause I'm not a great auditory learner. So the fact that I don't write my affirmations, which my life partner has been telling me to do. And, and that's because I haven't found ones that really work in a sense. Like I have a gratitude journal where I'm mindful and appreciate the moments. So whenever there's a moment of the day that I really appreciate it, either I take time to write about it during the day or I reflect um, either that night or the day after about me appreciating that moment. And that's been very helpful to rewire my thinking and to appreciate more moments of my life and understand that if I'm completing a whole journal of appreciative moments, then my life is pretty good. So, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think there are things that I specifically need to hear on a day to day that aren't the same, which is why it's like, it's not something I can repeat and re repetition and consistency is definitely um, helpful with self-talk when you're trying to rewire how you think. Um, but maybe what I can do, cause I struggle with the power of belief. And I think, um, on the it's a real podcast, go over to my podcast, YouTube channel and subscribe and remember to subscribe to life is Rocky. Um, but I think our next episode is going to be on the power of belief. Um, so probably check that out by the time I release this video, it may be out, check it out. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, sorry, something in my tooth. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like with this transition to happiness coaching, like this is the first time in my life that I really questioned believing in myself. Every other leap that I took, every other transition that I made, that was within my control because relationships and interactions with other people was not totally within my control. So those transitions handled differently. <laughs> but, um, but as far as the things within my control, yeah, I believed in myself. Like, I didn't doubt myself at all. Like, I should have been some concerns when I moved to Oakland and didn't have stable housing. Like, but I was confident that I was going to make that shit work. I mean, I did, though. And I think because there is that that doubt of belief in myself right now as I transition, even though, look at the facts. Look what you're doing. Look at what you're creating. That's all you, baby. Um note to self <laughs> but uh I think what may be more affirming for me is remembering when I have believed in myself remember when I have took chances on myself remember when I didn't doubt myself because like my dad raised me with the foundational belief that I am capable of learning it doesn't matter um, how long it takes me to learn something. It doesn't matter if I have to change how I'm learning about that something. If it, if I need uh, help, support, resources. Um, but no matter what, as long as my intention is to learn something, I will learn it. And because of that, I never doubted myself throughout school. Because it's like, yeah, this may be hard, but I'll get it. Because that's how I was raised. That was a great belief to instill in me in a young age. Um... Because then, yeah, I didn't doubt myself. It was just like, oh, I have to figure out how to learn this, which is something I definitely want to instill with my children. You know, like the whole point of the education system is figure out how you learn <laughs> and to learn about yourself. Um, but yeah, like, and that will be a part of the self-awareness skill with my within my self-actualization uh, need within my happiness coaching, so... I'm excited about that. That shit. Self-actualization, like developing that program. Oh, the self-awareness alone. I was like, oh my God, if people knew this. <sighs> oh, 
But yeah, I'm I'm <sighs> remembering when I have believed in myself. Remembering when I di didn't doubt myself at all. I had 100% faith in myself and my abilities, you know? Like looks, that's another thing cuz that's been a journey. But my abilities, what I'm able to do, Yeah, I'm very thankful for that lesson because I never have doubted myself. Like, I only applied to two schools when I was applying to undergrad. It wasn't until the spring semester when everybody else was getting their acceptance letters and they were getting a bunch, like a bunch of letters. And I was like, why the fuck did I only apply to two schools? <laughs> but upon applying, that's how confident I was that I would get into both. I mean, I did have like over a 4.0 GPA in AP classes so and I was doing hella shit in high school so and that was all me you know I mean I knew what padded the resume but that was me you know and even in for grad school like technically I only fully applied to one school I was in the midst of applying to the other school when I got accepted by the first school and that's the one I wanted more so I just didn't finish my application with the other one but um yeah, I, I didn't doubt myself. I went into a whole new fucking profession or field. I went from a bachelor's of arts in broadcast journalism to a master's of arts in marital and family therapy. Tell me how that connects. I mean, I did minor in psychology in undergrad, but still. <laughs> like the fact that I jumped at that with no doubt. And I was like, yeah, sure. I hope I like it. But I trusted myself. I trusted my spirit. I knew what my spirit was telling me, you know, like, and I had an act for that very early on to like hear, like not my human self that's been polluted with all this humanity, <laughs> humans, but, um, but like my spiritual self, the self that existed before this human body, like, Hey, wake up. You like this. This means something to you. Follow this. And I was like, cool, let's go. Because <laughs> I got this. I can do it. Obviously, I'm feeling a pull. So let me go towards it, you know. And obviously, I'm feeling a pull towards happiness coaching. I'm feeling this pull right now. I'm also feeling a pull to pro towards professional speaking. But I'm understanding that the journey of happiness coaching will prepare me for professional speaking. Just because of all this shit I'm learning and I'm about to be teaching, then I'll be able to teach on a larger scale. But yeah, like, believe in myself because I've already done this shit. Let's look at past evidence. <laughs> like, I can do this. I can do this. I am being pulled towards happiness coaching. I'm being pulled towards happiness coaching because I want to help other people reach self-actualization. I'm being pulled towards happiness coaching because I've discovered some of the strategies to help you cope with life. And I feel like everyone needs to be taught these strategies. And the fact that this wasn't normal within either parenting or our education system, I feel like is doing a severe disservice to humanity. Because imagine if we had the strategies on how to deal with life. Imagine. That means everything you experience, you have strategies to deal with. Could you imagine what that would do to society? Because a lot of us are just figuring it out as we go and we're not doing a great job. We are stumbling and fumbling and messing the fuck up. <laughs> wow, this is basically like, you know, when you were young, a lot of our parents said, 
to learn from our elders, from the mistakes of our elders. So that way we don't have to make those same mistakes. Like this is that, but in positive. So like mistakes, learn where they messed up. So you don't mess up in that way, right? However, we're human. So yes, make mistakes. We learn from that. Yes, yes. And also, what if we had strategies on how to deal with life? prior to having to deal with it like could you imagine and that's what i'm saying i do believe evolutionarily like the next evolution of humanity isn't a, a physical or biological one to me it's a mental and spiritual and emotional one and that i believe is self-actualization like if you look at where we are and what we have the capacity to meet in maslow's hierarchy of needs like we're just now figuring out belonging and love actually means something. Oh, let's give people more family leave. Let it be both parents. Let's people have sick leave and, and time with their families and holidays and, and not guilting them for not working and shit. Oh, families mean something. Loved ones mean something. How the fuck didn't you notice? But capitalism. Anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, so we're just getting to that point. But I think because there has been a shift and a prioritization of health and wellness, more people are becoming self-reflective, both within the belonging and love need, as well as the esteem need. And that allows more room, especially as we increase in automation and robotic technology, we're only going to increase to not have to do daily things just because there's something that can do it so therefore we're left with more time to spend with ourselves our thoughts and our loved ones and see what we actually want in this world and i'm like what if you had the strategies though so that's the purpose of my happiness coaching program is to provide people with the skills and strategies on how to deal with life and i've been struggling to find kind of a mission of it and i think that's what it is because we have not been taught shit <laughs> millennials are just figuring it out like wait a minute let's break these generational trauma cycles what what are boundaries <laughs> we are just now figuring the shit out okay so because i've gone through exponential growth and only continue to do more every time and that's why i do rocky's reflections please subscribe to my youtube channel check out the playlist rocky's reflections that's why i do this what that's why i share my story that's why i use my voice because i think differently i process differently i'm very logical that's the aquarian in me i'm very logical and um i think differently especially because i am a therapist now mind you as my former supervisor said therapists like people who have the calling of, of therapy think a certain way. That's why they were called. Um, Cause there's some stuff you can't teach. Like the questions you ask clients in session when nobody else is with you, you kind of got to feel that. <laughs> so, um, and it's just connecting dots and thinking in a certain way. And uh, sorry, something in my eye. But um, yeah, I, I think in a certain way that not everybody thinks in. And as I'm figuring it out on my growth journey, I share so other people can figure it out for themselves. And now I'm just packaging this bitch <laughs> and technically selling it, teaching it. Whether that's through happiness coaching or my professional speaking business. <sighs> I can do this. Cause this is me, this is all me. And I have the ability to do this. Whew. Appreciate you for listening. <laughs> Joining me and watching. Please subscribe. <sighs> I feel better after doing some actions to make me feel more secure and prepared and then recording my reflection. 
because this is more content. Please subscribe. <laughs> but yeah. I think the worry comes in because I had a flicker during that breath is like how the transition is going to go down. As far as me transitioning from practicing therapy to uh, practicing uh, happiness coaching, because like money wise, that's a concern. But I think instead of focusing on that, which I have no power of, like how that actually goes down. It's in the future, so it's not here yet. So why am I worrying about it when there's nothing I can do about it right now? Except for prepare and have as secure uh, and stable a transition that I can with making sure my program's ready. Um, like, <laughs> instead of worrying about that, yeah, let me just develop my program so I can start sooner as far as getting paid that's what I can do I can put actions into developing this program my website's almost done it's just developing the program now and uh yeah be ready to to start this because it's calling me therapy I have too many too many entities to answer to regulations to abide by and it's really constrictive to like actually helping people that's a whole system in and of itself <laughs> but um yeah i can do this i meant to do this this is where i was leading to I needed to learn the trauma work that I did, the process in the past in order to understand and get to understanding the Maslow's hierarchy of needs and how we have to have those needs met, but also acknowledge what's the next step after we've healed our trauma or in the process of healing our trauma. But I also have to respect my light and how if I'm trying to be in my self-actualization process, I need to be surrounded by it and that includes in work because it refuels me to teach others how to be in their light. <sighs> Note to self, watch this video when you're feeling down. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Raquel, you got this. You have the ability. You think differently. You're going to teach somebody how to have the skills and strategies on how to deal with life. That's you, baby. And for those who are watching who aren't me, <laughs> uh, stay tuned for my reveal of, I got multiple websites about to launch, but uh, stay tuned for that. So that way you can sign up for happiness coaching and learn these skills and strategies on how to deal with life, okay? Because <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. I spent, what, six years? That's six. Yeah, six years practicing therapy. It's time. <laughs> you know, I'm a millennial. We like to transition a lot. <laughs> <sighs> But you got to understand when your spirit's telling you to move on from something. And not be too scared to let go. It's time. So I'm going to do it. Send me all kinds of comfort energy, peace energy, hope energy, financial shit. Uh, go down in the description box below because I have my cash app hey! <laughs> or subscribe because that helps towards monetization as well Whew. All right. 
I'm going to do this. Let's go. Thank you so much for listening to your girl, Rocky, your revolutionary hippie from Life is Rocky. Have a beautiful day. Take care of you. Light and love.